All right, so just before we have a monster review day on all of the integrals we've ever learned, I wanted to sneak in one more topic. And so tonight, we're going to talk about how to integrate functions that involve arc trig integrals in the antiderivative. Um, but before we even touch those, I want to just really quick re quickly review our derivatives. I'd like to see you hit the pause button here and see how many. And see if you remember the generic rules for arc sine and arc tan's derivative, and then see if you can apply those rules to these two specific problems right in here and see how you do. So go ahead, hit pause, and work these out. Okay, so for the two generic rules, I wrote in my two rules right here for arc sine and arc tangent. And I, I didn't include arc cosine, but that's just the negation of arc sine. Um, so that's a really easy one to remember. So let's go ahead and see if I can apply these to these derivatives and see if you agree and got the same answer. So I'm thinking that e to the 2x is going to be my u. So his derivative is 2e to the 2x all over radical 1 minus u squared. And if I square it, I'll get e to the 4x. So that's probably how I'd leave my final answer. And then for the second one, I'm thinking natural log of x is my u. And so the derivative of u is 1 over x. And then I've got 1 plus u squared. So I'm going to put my squared right just like that so I could avoid the parentheses. Now I could rewrite it one more time. <clears throat> I could say 1 all over x times the quantity 1 plus the natural log squared of x. And that would be equivalent. In other words, now, uh, before we can move forward, I want to go back even further to something we covered in the previous two years in Algebra 2 and Pre-Calc, and that's just evaluating our trig functions. Now, I want you, one of the things that I want you to remember is that the y value here represents your angles. All right? So, you know, pi over 2, pi over 3, pi over 6, so forth, that's your y value. Whereas x was just the, the values themselves, like 1 half or radical 2 over 2. So x represents your values, and your, I'm going to call it my input, and y represents the angle. So, and the picture is okay. It's a little fuzzy. It's hard to read, but I think it's got all the key ingredients in there. I think it's one of the better pictures out there. Um, so, for instance, if I started at the top, we could say that the arc sine of one or inverse sine of one equals an angle, and the angle happens to be pi over two. So, the key is always remember that these arc sines are equal to an angle. Um, if I shimmy down the ladder a little bit, we could say arc sine of one half equals pi over 6. Um, arc sine of 0 is 0. If we went down the ladder a little further, um, let's see. I, I think these two right here are flip-flopped. We need to switch those. So we're going to say like the arc sine of negative 1 half is just simply equal to negative pi over 6. So because arc sine lives in quadrants 1 and 4, um, you know, when we get a negative value, we're just going to negate the angle, and it's pretty simple. Now, this graph isn't labeled nearly as much as arc sine was, but I think we can work on it together. Now, just a quick recap. Um, everything in this area here from 0 up to pi over 2 is quadrant 1, and then everything from um, pi over 2 all the way up to pi is quadrant 2, and we always like to think of them as lanes within the swimming pool. Um, so we live in quadrants 1 and 2, so my angles... Are, uh, can only be between 0 and pi. You can't give me a negative angle on these ones. So we'll just start off here. Uh, let's start with that point. Um, arc cosine or inverse cosine of 1 equals an angle of 0. Uh, if we went up here to the 1 half, we could say inverse cosine of 1 half equals an angle of what? Hopefully 60 degrees, known as pi over 3. If we stopped right in the middle, we could say, whoops, I almost wrote sine, Inverse cosine of 0 equals an angle of pi over 2. And then here's where it gets a little more challenging. Um, let's say I went right here to the negative 1 half. Inverse cosine of negative 1 half. Now remember, you've got to give me an angle that lives in the second quadrant. And so it's going to be a cousin to pi over 3, and it's just going to be 2 pi over 3. And that's his second quadrant counterpart. On the way, All the way up here to... Uh, if we did inverse cosine of negative 1, we would get an angle of pi. All right, so all the review we've done so far, I'm, I left the most important one for last here. Let's really hit arc tangent pretty hard. Um, the most important value, um, and just recall that we do have these asymptotes at pi over 2 and y equals negative pi over 2, but I want to talk about what's happening right here when x equals 1. What is the corresponding angle right there? So let's say that the arc tangent of 1 equals an angle of what? Yeah, pi over 4. Or we could go on the flip side and talk about negative 1. Arc tangent 
of negative 1 equals an angle of negative pi over 4. A couple of interesting limit questions that I like to hit on, and we're going to see a lot of these in a couple of weeks when we introduce you to something called an improper integral, is um, as x approaches infinity, what is this function's limit? In other words, what is his intended height? And what you'll notice as we follow this curve and x gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, our intended height equals pi over 2. Now, I think you'll agree, arctan never actually equals pi over 2, but his limit, his intended height, is pi over 2. And then on the flip side, as x approaches negative infinity, we could say that the curve is approaching a height of negative pi over 2. All right, so now finally we are ready for some new stuff, and we're basically just going to try to undo the derivatives that we did earlier. So in the initial problem, we're not going to see an actual arc trig function in the initial problem. So let's talk about how we're going to integrate the derivative of u divided by, and this is going to look pretty funny, radical a squared minus u squared. Notice I didn't say 1 minus u said squared, I said a squared minus u squared. The antiderivative is going to be the arc sine, or inverse sine, I don't care what notation you use, of u divided by a plus c. So there's rule number one that we've got to memorize tonight. Rule number two, good news is there only is two, and I know they look overwhelming, but they're not going to be that bad. du divided by a squared plus u squared, all right? Watch this coefficient. We've got a coefficient of one over a. Notice the arc sine didn't have this coefficient but our tangent does, of u divided by a plus c. So we're going to spend the rest of the night practicing these. We are going to see some definite integrals where we're going to have to evaluate, you know, arc sine of uh, one half or arc tangent of one and so forth. And that's why we practice those last couple of slides. But other than that, it's basically going to be uh, working with these two formulas. The big difference, normally we would pick, you know, we assign a u. Well, we're also, not only are you going to pick a u, you know, and then calculate du, but you're also going to have to pick an a. All right, I want to see you pick an a value and, and, and show me who that is on the side of your paper, just like we do tonight in the video. All right, so our first big live problem is we're going to talk about the integral of dx all over radical 4 minus x squared. So first thing, um, whoops, I don't need that dx right there because I put one in the numerator. So um, is this a definite integral or an indefinite? Well, hopefully you're screaming indefinite at your computer screen, and it's simply indefinite. Why? Uh, because there's no bounds on the integral, which means we are going to have to make sure we have a plus C on the end of our answer. All right, so I'm trying to figure out which of the two formulas that it matches up best with. I think it matches up best with the first one for a couple of reasons. We do have the radical sign, and we do have a minus sign, and what you'll notice is the constant comes before the variable, and that also kind of helps as well, too. But anyway... I want to try to make this look like, you know, at least what's underneath the radical. I want it to be a squared minus u squared. So my a value is a 2. I'm going to say my u value is an x because that's what had to get squared in order to produce this term, which then means du equals dx. And that always makes me excited because, uh, you know, that just means I don't have any real miscellaneous coefficients to worry about. So according to the rule on the last slide, the antiderivative is going to be arc sine of u divided by a plus c. And ladies and gentlemen, that is my final answer. All right, our next example is a big step up compared to the first one. We're going to talk about dx all over 2 plus 9x squared. Now, what you'll notice here is, of the two rules we introduced you to tonight, it fits rule number two a lot better for a couple of reasons. There's no radical in the denominator, and also we're using a plus sign here in the middle as opposed to a minus sign. Um, the other thing is you might have tried a more traditional u sub. You might have tried letting uh, u equal the entire denominator like we would have, you know, a month ago or, you know, a couple days ago even. Uh, but you'll notice the du is 18x dx. And the bad news is that there's no x in the numerator here to cancel out with this x right here. So right there was my red flag. That's when I killed that option. And I just said, you know what, I'm going to try to make the denominator, I'm going to rewrite it in terms of a squared plus u squared. Where my a is, this is kind of interesting, what would you have to square in order to produce a 2? Qu answer is radical 2. Now your u value, what would you have to square in order to produce 9x squared? And that's the quantity 3x. Now his derivative is going to be 3 times dx. So red alert, red alert, 
we got to divide that 3 over, and we're going to have a coefficient of 1 third kind of dangling around. So here's what we've got. We've got 1 third. We've got our du on top all over a squared plus u squared. So I think we're ready to go. We're ready to apply our formula. And I got 1 third. Now, when you're working with arctangent, the coefficient is 1 over a. Arctan, or inverse tan, of u over a. Now, u in this case was our 3x, and it's divided by radical 2, and plus c. So, that's just don't forget about this one third right there. That's the most often forgot about piece, or we might don't want you to forget about the 1 over radical 2 either. So, there's my final answer. Our third example is an absolute monster compared to the first two. We're certainly going to start to get a little more challenging. My numerator is x plus 2. My denominator is going to be radical 4 minus x squared. All right. So if I tried an old-fashioned u sub, if I let u equal the inner function 4 minus x squared, it doesn't kill the entire numerator. What I'm going to do here, and I'm going to cut right to the chase, is I'm going to rewrite this one fraction as the sum of two simpler fractions. I'm going to say I've got x over radical 4 minus x squared plus the integral of 2 all over radical 4 minus x squared. And we're allowed to do that anytime your denominator is simply a monomial, which it is because it's just one radical term. All right, now, which of these two terms could we have integrated a month ago, and which one could we not integrate until tonight? So that is the question. Well, the one here on the left is the one we could have done a month ago, and the one here on the right is the one that we can only do as, uh, as of tonight. So I'm going to tackle the one on the left first. I'm going to let u equal the inner function. His derivative is going to be negative 2x dx. So I'm going to divide the negative 2x over, and I'm going to get ready to substitute here. Let's see. Uh, let's see, we're looking at the integral of x over radical u. Whoops, oops, oops. that's got to be a u. And du divided by negative 2x. Good news is the x's cancel. Pull out your coefficient. Now, as I'm getting ready to integrate this, it's not du over u, is it? Which would have been ln. It's actually u to the negative 1 half. So it doesn't fit the ln antiderivative. I've actually got to use my power rule. Let's see, my new exponent would be 1 half. I'm going to divide by 1 half or multiply by 2, which gives me negative 1 for a coefficient. And the plus c will come at the end of the entire fraction on the second term. So we're really looking at negative radical. And I believe my u was 4 minus x squared. So there's my first term. All right, I'm going to switch colors back to blue. And I'm going to slide up the screen here a little bit. All right, on my blue color, um, I'm going to let a equal 2 because that's what I had to square to produce the 4. I'm going to let u equal the x. My du equals dx, which is awesome. A little happy face right in there. So what are we integrating? We're really integrating 2 all over radical a squared minus u squared du. So it fits our mold perfectly. If you, if you feel better about pulling the 2 out here, be my guest. So, let's see, what do we got cooking here? We've got plus 2. The, there is no coefficient built into this formula. It's just arc sine of u over a. Now, my u was an x, my a was a 2. So then I'll throw the plus c. And I'm just going to bring that term fast forward and bring it right down next to the other answer. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is one obnoxious answer for this antiderivative. All right, our last one for tonight is one of my favorite problems. Um, let's talk about the integral from 0 to pi over 2. So this is our first definite integral of the night. And we're going to be integrating cosine of x divided by 1 plus sine squared of x. All right, now when you look at that denominator, you, your first instinct may have been to try to grab some identity. And I'll tell you what, if this said if this said 1 minus sine squared, then boy, life would have been good. We could have substituted cosine squared in there, reduced. Oh, man, would have been a great integral. Um, but as it is, with the plus sign being in there, there is no identity for 1 plus sine squared. We're just stuck with it. And, um, you know, you may try letting u equal the entire denominator, but the du doesn't, you know, lead you to a good place. So that was a dead end and, you know, kind of ran out of some other options. And as a last resort, I started thinking, hmm, I wonder if it's one of those crazy, strange, 
arg trig functions that we did really quick one night. And of course it is. So what I'm going to do is, because there is a plus sign here in the middle, I'm kind of thinking arg trig, or I'm arc tan. Um, I'm going to say my a value is a 1. I'm going to say my u value is a sine. Notice I didn't say sine squared, I just said sine. And the du is going to be cosine of x, which is awesome. Because you'll notice by the time you solve for dx, we're going to get those cosines to cancel out. Now, don't forget about this trick. We do need to adjust the bounds so that we're in terms of u consistently from start to finish in this setup. Um, if I substitute a u, sine of, or I'm sorry, substitute a 0, sine of 0 is still 0, but the sine of pi over 2 is a 1, so my new upper bound is a 1. I've got cosine of x all over a squared plus u squared times the derivative of u all over cosine. Cancel those cosines, and ladies and gentlemen, we are good to go. Now remember, I'm going to leave everything in terms of u. That's probably one of the trickiest things we've tried. We've had a little trouble with is we've adjusted the bounds to be in terms of u, but then we rewrite our antiderivative in terms of x, and we've kind of been counterproductive in that sense. So um, I'm going to do 1 over a, which is just 1, so our coefficient's 1, arc tan of u over a, leave it in terms of u, no need for a plus c, it bounds 0 to 1. So what I need to do is I need to evaluate the arctangent of 1 minus the arctangent of 0. And I got pi over 4 minus an angle of 0. My final answer for the night is pi over 4. So here's what I need you to do before you come to class tomorrow. I gotta make sure I need you to make sure you've got the two new formulas memorized. And also, hey, go back and get those derivatives memorized if you're having any troubles with them. Make yourself some flashcards. And just remember our credo from the other day. We have to maintain um, a lifestyle of excellence here. We can't just turn it on and off whenever we feel like it. We've got to operate at a high level. Let's get those derivatives memorized. Let's get these new integral rules memorized. And let's come in ready to rock and roll tomorrow.